So in this video we're going to have a look at the shotgun chokes and the patterns of shot they throw in a double barrel shotgun. So this is one of the advantages of a double barrel over a semi-auto and that's that you get to choose two different chokes. So what I'm going to do in this case is swap out the lower barrel with our cylinder bore which is no choke and we're going to compare that with the top barrel which is a full choke. Now if you don't know what a shotgun choke is, we'll pretend that's the barrel and that's the little bead sight. A cylinder ball will chuck a very wide pattern of shot. What a choke is, is a constriction in the end of the barrel, a maximum of about one millimeter, which will redirect the shot into a tighter pattern. So the pattern density will be higher towards the center of the cone. Now if we were to use a less constriction in the barrel, say half a millimetre, that would be a half choke. We have to throw a pattern somewhere between the cylinder and the full choke. The Americans would call it a modified choke, not a half choke. The extreme spread of the shot won't change too much, but the pattern density towards the centre will. So nothing set in stone with the shotguns. The dimensions will vary a little bit between makes and models. Now you may hear that a full choke will throw some percentage of shot within this size circle at this distance, but it's all best taken with a grain of salt. You're not going to know what it's going to do until you shoot it because every shotgun, choke, shot shell combination is going to be different. So you really do have to fire it and that's what we're about to do. So the first shot's federal number four shot, with the only change being the chokes. So one cylinder and one's full. So the full choke was tighter than the cylinder bore, which actually was so wide it was hitting the ground before it got there. You can see it bouncing up. But it wasn't as tight as what I was expecting, so what I did was took a Winchester number four shell, exactly the same as the Federal, same weight, same size, same length, just the changing the brand. And what I suspect is happening is when you see the glitter from the shot of the Federal shell fly down range, that means it's got flat surfaces because spherical objects won't glitter they won't reflect the light so it's getting deformed on firing and that's causing a wider pattern the Winchester actually looks like it has buffer in the shot and that's the white cloud that you see as it fires which would act to protect it and hence holds a tighter pattern here I'm firing the same Winchester number 4 shells but this time I'm using a half choke on a 20 inch barrel coach gun compared to the full choke on a 28 inch barrel So those patterns were as expected. The full choke held a very tight pattern where the half choke held a wider one. What you will notice is the velocity difference between the 28 inch and the 20 inch barrel. So the 20 inch coach gun fires at a slightly lower velocity. Here's some BBs fired from the 28 inch barrel comparing the cylinder with the full choke. And the same shells again, this time with a 20 inch compared to the 20 age barrel, half choke compared to 3 quarter. So again you see the velocity difference between the 20 and 28 inch barrel. Over that range, which is about 35-40 yards, it's about 8 milliseconds difference in flight time. Here's AAA buckshot out of cylinder and full choke. So there's very little difference between the cylinder and the full choke with that shot. Far less than what the smaller shot is. This is SSG with cylinder and full choke. And this is the SG, which is the largest shot. 
So only nine pellets per shell. The triple A's and the SSG's show up better on the white background. Here it is fired with three quarter and full chokes. You don't have to see a difference between those. Anything over BB's doesn't seem to be taking influence from the chokes very much at all. What I also aimed to show in this video was the recoil difference between the top and the bottom barrel because they're not in the same axis. And the top barrel is not as in line with the shoulder, so the bottom barrel should recoil less and the top barrel recoil more. So I'm going to kick up further because the leverage is acting against you. But as the slow motion footage shows, there's really no difference at all, and I, that surprised me. I really thought there would be. So that's a misconception that I've had, and that's the reason I always fired the bottom barrel first. So you can get that top barrel back on target for the second shot faster. But as it turns out, it doesn't really matter. Not with this gun anyway. Here's something funny I noticed while putting this movie together. Well, it amused me anyway. Anyway, um, make sure you click thumbs up below if you liked this movie. Leave a comment if you want, and I'll better go buy some new bed sheets. <laughs>